Hello. Hello, hello on the replay. Um, I am realizing that organizing book clubs um, is not a strong point. So I don't even, I, I should have posted it on my Instagram. I just realized now, but I am currently nowhere near my phone. So we'll just let it slide. Hello on the replay. We're going to try to keep this um, as short uh, and simple as possible. Um, but if we got to get to the meat of it, into the thick of it, we're going to get into it. And also on the replay, just let me know, um, you know, any questions you may have or any thoughts you may have about the book. Um, you know, just please, please let me know in the comment section. Also, if someone is here, if you can let me know if you can hear me, because I always get a little weird. Like, can people hear me when I... <laughs> am um using my mic which i am trying to use is it on oh yeah i think it is is it on? listen who knows but but here we are uh oh come on come on now locks realize the mic was was trying to do a swivel on us so today we were talking about this beautiful book um it's called house boys by um ferdinand oyano um, and this book is about a young man who grew up in, who is a native person of Cameroon in this small community. And he realized very quickly that the grass is not always greener on the other side. Um, it's very unfortunate things that kept happening to him. We'll talk about a couple of those themes. Hey, Bree. And, you know, just what's going on with him, um, just in the thick of it. I also want to, you know, really encourage us to expand our minds and thinking how, like, capitalism, um, if impacted this young boy, how um, systems of oppression impacted him, how trauma, abuse, there's just so many things um, that happened to him that I just kind of truly, truly felt bad for the things that happened to him. And I also didn't blame him on decisions that he made that even as me as the reader felt like those decisions was not really in his best interest. So have any of y'all read the book? If so, let me know your rating. So this is not like my favorite Black classics, right? Um, the other ones we've read have been my top. I wouldn't say this is like my my favorite, but I am going to give it a five star, a soft five star, because I think this is this book is a I feel like it's a familiar tale that so many people can learn from um, in the sense that I'm sure there's so many people who fell for the trap that oh, just come over here and join Christianity and everything will be just so great and we'll take care of you and I'm your benefactor and everything is going to be okay. And what happens when a benefactor dies? When happens when the benefactor decides you are now um, the number one enemy? What happens when the benefactor or those close to the benefactor catches an attitude or feel upset or don't want to really uh, be around you. So this is this right here is definitely a um, cautionary tale. If you if you ask me, hey, Erica, Erica couldn't be here today, but she will be here in the next book club pick. You understand? Um, like, yes, I thought a lot about how white feminism impacted him and all the workers, exactly. And also how colorism impacted him um, and, and all the workers and the men um, in, that who was around. If y'all have any questions that you would want to um, further discuss, let me know in the comment section and I can put it up on the screen. This is one of the first reviews I've done without having questions pre-planned. Um, because I just thought, let's just talk about the themes and what's happening in this book. So for those of you in the chat, I'm going to give you a question because this is like the one question that I just kept thinking about. It's like, 
what was your thoughts or how did you conceptualize the choices that Tunde made in the situations he was put into based off his relationship with his parents? There were some passages. I wish I, I highlighted things, um, which I did not do. But there were some passages with um, Tunde and his father. And his father was like, I'm just going to keep beating you until I'm tired. And of course, this is the reasons why it's like I'm beating you and you're being beat it for this reason, that reason. It was just like so much beating that his father uh, was doing. And he even said, um, the look came into his eyes that always came when he was going to teach me how to behave. And I'm just like, this guy, the dad was really on one. I just felt like he was such an abusive parent. And it kind of reminded me of another Black classic we read, which was Ben Okri. And we, the main character was being so abused by his father on a regular basis and his mom was just like, I, I won't say that she just let it happen, but she did in a, in a lot of points. But she also was in like this abusive, toxic situation. And I kind of felt like that mirrored itself in this book as well. And I'm wondering if anybody else felt that way. Um, let me know if you did. One second, y'all. But yeah, it was just something I was just thinking about. I was like, huh. Um, and the abuse that he felt personally and the things that he went through, in my opinion, I think it makes sense because, sorry, I'm also fighting for my life with allergies. Do you hear what I'm saying? Fighting for my entire life with these allergies. Um, but... I felt like if you are being abused in the home and don't have a voice and your father just thinks you are a fuck up and nothing you do is right. Why would you not go be lured in by the promises of Christianity? That seems like something an adolescent would do. Like I know so many adolescents who because they're experiencing, you know, um, instability in the home. And then they'll meet someone or, you know, the Mormons is knocking on the door, the, Jeho the, Ho the Jehovah Witnesses is knocking on the door, and they're like, huh, this is giving me purpose. This feels like structure. Let me run to it. And not really having their frontal lobe being developed to a point where they understand what, what even what's going on. So I'm wondering, what are y'all thinking? Relig oh, hold on. Let me click it. Religion was definitely a big driving force. For sure. For sure. Um, I feel like the relationship Tunde had with his dad was a mirror for the other male relationships. And I think you were really onto something there, um, Erica, because I felt that way too, especially when uh, father, whoever his name was, died. And then he went to that other guy and then um, just other relationships he had with men in passing. It just felt like, how do I, I'm trying to explain this from a traumatic or a trauma or a wounded point of view. It's like, you are attracted to things that you are used to, things that feel normal, things that feel comfortable because you know how to navigate them. You know what you have to do to survive them or to get through them. And a lot of times we are drawn to things that are just comfortable and familiar versus things that are affirming and safe and um you know, healthy and not toxic. So I, I felt that way as well. Father Gilbert, thank you. You know, I was going through it. Hey, Mayama. 
uh, Father Gilbert uh, beat him maybe not as bad. The other father who sent him to the the commandant. Yeah. Yeah. He, I often felt like I wonder the anxiety that he had on a daily basis because on some levels more than, you know, um, some others more than, how, what am I trying to say? On some levels, others more than others. He was abused by all the men in his life. That's going back to this relationship. I mean, this comment. I read maybe half of the book and had to put it down. I may pick it up later. It's okay. Why did you had to put it down? Was it a comf was it discomfort? You know, what was it that you were feeling that you said I, I had to put it down? <laughs> Was anybody shocked by the behaviors of, was it the second guy he got sent to? I believe it was the, oh my God, me and names, can't remember his name. But the man who became his benefactor after fa Father Gilbert died. Um, where, what was y'all thoughts on his wife? <laughs> True, if you're constantly put in a position, a um, position, there go my dyslexia, put in a situation where someone who has authority over you is abusive and consistently reinforcing that hierarchy, it sets a precedent for how you think people, um, how you think people, for how you think people in authority. Yep, I caught it. Took me a minute. But yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree. The pace was slow. Um, and, you know, it, it took a couple tries. I kept trying, but couldn't get into it. So to my Emma's point, um, Erica, remember when we, there we go, the command, the commandant's wife, him. Yep. Um, going back to Maya's com Maya's com comment. Um, Erica, do you remember when we read, um, I think it's just called deep. I don't know why I want to say it's called into the deep, but you know, um, that story of the historian and, you know, Merfolks and the transatlantic slave route, you know, that book, Tate, what was it? Something, something digs, David digs, you know what I'm talking about? I'm, I'm having a hard time bringing it up, but that's how I felt about that book. And I had to reread it three times before the live show to really understand what the hell was going on. Because at first I was like, no, thank you, Maima, The Deep. But now The Deep is one of my favorite books of all time. But at the moment, I was like, oh, my God. Why am I fighting for my life? I cannot get it was like watching paint dry it felt like the book was so slow and I feel that way for um the house boy and I also felt like even in this book there were certain things or certain ways that certain things was written that I was just confused about so with books that are this short the information needs to flow in a way where I'm understanding that everything is connected. Um, I didn't quite feel that way for certain parts of this book. It wasn't like um, so long a letter, which it was like everything hit. Everything was related to everything. Um, some kind, sometimes it felt like it fell off script. It was just, just writing as if it wanted it to be a full length novel, but it wasn't giving the brevity that it needed in certain parts to me for a book of this size. I don't know if that makes sense. I don't know if that makes sense, but I hope that y'all y'all caught what I was throwing out. Sorry. Um, so there's a 200 character limit, so it's hard to write <laughs> full thoughts. No, it's okay. It's okay. Um, the Deep, no, the, it was this one. But yeah, I love The Deep. But what do we think about the command, the commandant's wife? 
And I think locks and thoughts may have some opinion, especially in related to white feminism with this character. Yeah. And this character's interaction with Tunde, I just kept thinking, this kid just don't get a break. It's hit after hit. It is truly hit after hit. This kid is not getting not one break. Um, it's very stream of conscious because of the journal format. Yep, it is. Yeah. Come on, Erica. You better speak your truth on Beyonce's internet. Uh, so long ago. Fire. That was a hard five star. This is, I'm giving it, I probably should give it what I want. I'm just feeling bad. I'm going to give it four stars. She was, she was out here trying to hold secrets, trying to make Tunde an accomplice, making him uncomfortable, doing and saying things to make him uncomfortable, and still being praised for her beauty. White hypocrisy, it, it, it is something that I find to be so fascinating. I'm like, what? I mean, let me let me see if I have like a passage. Um, Cause I was like, oh no, this is about Sophie. Poor Sophie. Poor Sophie. My stomach is growling, y'all. And I apologize if you hear it. I'm like looking to find. But y'all, the, co the commandment's wife. Just rude as hell. Okay. So it was like, while the men were all admiration in Madam's presence, the ladies did not quite manage to conceal under their four smiles a certain bitterness at being so eclipsed. And to me... That that pairs well. It pairs in so it in so many ways in like modern society. How like women like um, Megan The Stallion, women like uh, body shapes, even like Mary J. Blige and etc. Don't get praised to the level of if a white woman was to dress the way that they do or look the way that they do. Um, the Kardashians are, are, are famous for that stuff. Now they're in their skinny girl era again, but, you know, for a long time, it was like, hey, let, let me get hips, ass, dips, dips, lips, hips, all those things. So when I read that, I'm like, yeah. Of course, you would be bitter and feel eclipse um, while everyone is just like, oh, my God, she's so beautiful. Um, and that like married men is like, hey, I'm, I'm trying to get a little piece of that. You know what I mean? Her behavior, her husband response reminded me of the reasons behind the second wave of the KKK in the 1920s. You know, I was thinking that too, locks and thoughts, but not like to the point of the 1920s or the second wave. It just reminded me, the acceptance of it kind of reminded me of some of the themes and what I'm reading in a graphic novel called Run and also just reminded me of just the racial responding and responses of her behaviors 
it just reminded me also of March when we were reading the other day for the um, Realm of Comics book club. It's just, I just kept thinking to myself, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised at all. Uh, when she first came on the scene, Tunde pissed me off because he was like, she's so beautiful. And then there's Sophie, who he thought was beautiful up until, yeah. 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 That's why I was like, he, there's just so many levels to what happened to him. It's the mistreatment as a child. It's growing up and in an area where he felt like he didn't get like resources he needed or he needs to escape. And there's so many kids who'd be like, I'm ready to get out of this town or whatever. And then meet someone who he thinks is, you know, gonna make him well and kind of save his soul and help him. And then that person treats him bad too, but also then dies. And then he gets this coveted job and then the job is not what he think it is. And then he, um, gets mistreated by, you know, the mistress, the, ma the madam, and mistreated by other fucking people, anybody really. And then he continues to um, live his life, and then he gets caught up in shit with Sophie and gets tortured and beaten. It's just like, it seems as if the author was writing it being like there will never be a time in his life where he is not experiencing an extensive amount of abuse. That's what it felt like to me anyway. Um, I wish I had a little tissue. I don't know how I started to get sleepy. Apologize for that on the replay. Um, when she first came to the scene, and that's what I read, and facts. Oh, yeah, I read that part. It had me heated. Uh, she really she really gives how white women are the driving force in white supremacy. And this is why the first wave... <laughs> A white feminism was only for them. And people be like, no, we're looking for feminism of all women. If you saw, no, you weren't trying to be there for the Negroes or the indigenous women. It was solely for white women. And then it just also reminded me again I'm bringing it back to uh March by John Lewis and Run which is also by him and another author is that the panels throughout those graphic novels was a, de a, a great depiction on reality there is so many times in the panels where you saw like a, a white woman either being more angry or more belligerent or more whatever to, you know, the civil rights activists. It's just like an upholding white supremacy to such an astounding height that is you, it's hard to deny their presence. Even when we go to like, um, 2016 election, and, I, and like I said in the live show, there's also so many studies that have come out that says, you know, um, white women are more likely to like associate and line up with the political review uh, a view, a views, opinions <laughs> of their husbands, even if it's something that they don't really believe in. And I'm not saying this is all white women. I'm just saying that when we look at the facts and the polls and who votes for who and what happens and what systems and this and that they show it they show it we knew in 2016 they showed that white women is really how trump won for the most part so you know it's just one of those things you can't escape it Oh my God. 
I mean, you're not wrong in that because Black people in 2023 are still suffering under this dominion. So in reality, this book is exactly. And I was saying earlier, like how there's so many things in this book that pairs well to now. There's also a lot of people in the world, rather Black or Brown, still look at Christianity as a saving grace. There is black people or brown people worldwide who still think the closeness to whiteness they become, the more acceptance they are. You know, there's people bleaching. There's people getting into relationships with um, white folks that truly don't have their best interests at heart. You know what I mean? There's, I have... There's so many white people out here that get in relationships with black people or people of color, and it is a beautiful, healthy thing. But there are also people who get into those relationships where it's like maybe one person is trying to like piss off somebody or make somebody upset or thinking like, I'll finally get, you know, what I need or what is owed to me if I am by proxy with a white person or associated with a white person. These are all still white supremacist uh, or white supremacy ideal idealization. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. And Tune Day was hook, line, and center. You know what I mean? He truly thought that this is this is how I survive. And also, can we blame him? Can we blame Tune Day for his actions and his thoughts? Can we? That's the question I pose. Um, system justification theory, it's wild. Um, I actually am not familiar with that. John Jost, it's a theory within social psychology that system justifying beliefs or serve as psychological palliative function. Ah, makes it. I assume that's what you were saying, but I didn't want to make an assumption. Yeah, system justification can be ego and group justification. Yeah, yeah. And it's like a, a while ago, I was talking about the, the travesties with a friend. I was just like, it is so messed up how people use religion to justify their actions. Like even the KKK used Christianity to justify their actions. They even use the mantras that black civil rights um, activists used and weaponized it to justify their actions. Like, because you're doing this, we can do this, but not understanding that this black civil rights activists were doing this to make sure that black people were considered in the policies that were made, that were considered in legislation, that were free, fighting for freedom, not even fighting to literally just exist as a human being, as white counterparts, or just just to exist as a, as a human being. And the KKK twisted and shifted shit. So it's, yeah, listen, when you start justifying stuff, and being really um, rigid and confined to that justify justification, that that is when shit hit the fan. Personally, personally, um, that proximity to power is the only way you see out when you have no framework of freedom. Yep. 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 And I think of that even like just putting myself on the on the hot plate here. Um, I thought the only way to success into being something is through college. Which is inherently a classic system. In other things. So so now I'm reconciling with. How do I continue to be a lifelong student? How do I continue to work within these systems? 
how, how do I continue to exist knowing those things, you know? Um, I recommend y'all to read There Were In Her Property by Stephanie E. Rogers. It's a really eye-opening topic on white women's role in enslavement. Um, you you know, you ain't got to do much, my Emma, to... Hold on, let me type this in. What is... Um... They, oh my God, they were her property. Okay. I'm like, good reads. Give me what I need. Since you're the only thing that want to pop up right now. Oh, 4.29 rating. Y'all, I need to buy another, like, I need to figure out a way to get another extensive thing, or I need to buy a whole new mouse and um, keyboard because I don't have the new Max. You don't have a, a lot of space, if none to plug anything in. So that's the unfortunate truth. The unfortunate truth. 296 pages, y'all. I just added it to my story graph. Okay. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. I wanted to knock the chief out because he would rather be in the company of Europeans. Yep. 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 And I also think about greed. Greed is a powerful motivator. And I think I think about that in, in so many different ways. And I don't know why half of my face is in here, but I just greed and wanting to fit in and you know, proximity to whiteness if you are raised a certain way can be intoxicating. And again, me going back to when I said earlier that this book is a cautionary tale. Like if you, I was fortunate to grow up in an all black community in New Orleans, right? Everybody's black. And it wasn't until I start getting putting in white spaces that I felt like I couldn't be my authentic self. And I also was truly introverted. I was so introverted. I did not speak nothing, but actually I'm more extroverted than I am introverted, but I also need a lot of time to myself. But at that time I was super introverted. So all I wanted to do was fit in. I also was tall I also was very skinny, very lanky. Nothing's really fitting me. No shoe size. I couldn't dress or look cute like the rest of the girls. So I was like, oh, am I fat? You know, seeing all these white girls at school. And you're like, but I want to look like them. I want to be normal. And, you know, and your parents and your family black as hell and they don't get what you're saying. They're like, show up Negro. <laughs> you know, like, you, like and your whole family is like, no, nah, still show up as yourself. And, you know, you get, a, you get into certain places. You are also growing. You're in, in, in certain developmental ages of your life and it can become intoxicating. It can be. But it's also a dangerous ass game. I do not recommend. Do some mental check-ins on yourself. If you're on the replay and you feel like you can relate to the main character, Tune Day, and you know his aspirations for the bad for the for the lack of a better word. Um hey Bree. Religion has always been used by those in power to oppress the already subjugated. Yeah. And this book was not um, an exception to that. Not at all. Not at all. And I also was thinking like, man, the French reach is long. 
the French reach is long. Like the French and their colonization efforts and mythologies to me is the most intriguing of like, what the fuck? I think it's intriguing to me um, because, you know, a lot of Cameroonians speak French um, is because of Louisiana is because of where I'm from. So I'm always just like the reach of the French is something serious. It really is. Okay, let's see where we're at. Hey, Sophie. I just bought a fish and naming him Paco. <laughs> as you should, as you should. Um, did anyone feel that class was, um, what? how did you feel that how class was discussed in the book is what I'm asking. The second question is, what are like some big themes that you thought were in the book that we haven't discussed? <laughs> no problems reading at the same time as Houseboy. Maybe that's why I couldn't get it. Yeah, yeah. There's sometimes, Mayama, I will read a Black classic, right? And I need to start logging my nonfiction. I need to log a lot of books, but I just forget. I haven't really have cared in the last year or two about being consistent about logging what I read. So what I read is what I read. <laughs> I haven't been able to fully log those in. That's why I be feeling like my monthly wrap ups are, are fake news. Um, but there's multiple times I'll read a black classic and then reading nonfiction and be like, wait, what the hell? You know, <laughs> like it's, it throws you off. Like I was reading a black classic and then also reading the killers of moon and flowers. And then there was like some, there were some things mentioned there and I was like, what the fuck? And then um, I was reading a little bit of 1619, the, the project of 1619. And then also reading Ben Okri, The Famished Road. Um, it's probably going to take me four years to finish six, the project of 1619. I was like, what's happening here? And, you know, even reading this, I also was thinking a little bit about the color of law, just some some minor themes in that book related to the house boy. It's just, I'll be reading something and I'm just like, God damn, not that making sense, you know. I put on hold to try again. Listen, that's all you can do. That's all you can do. Um, our next book is I thought I had it right here. And that apparently that's fake news, y'all. Well. Well, well, well. The next book that we will be reading um, and trying to, because it, you know, things got real busy in April. So we had to reschedule, reschedule, reschedule to today. But we, in June, we will be reading. Um, Violet Spring. Yes. Oh, I can't read Roots. Thank you. I was like, what is his name? Gary Phillips. Such a good one. Um, it is somewhere here. And I'm, I'm having a hard time locating it. Who knows where it's at. But... Um, I haven't been able to find an audio book for that. Um, I wasn't able to find an audio book for this one. So even though I also love audio books and would prefer them over reading with my eyes, because look, I don't have time for my brain to be telling me that's not a word or making up stuff. 
I'm trying to get through the book. Um, and, and have a good time. Amen. So I haven't been able to find an audio book, but, but we can still do this. It is a thicker book. I will say, um, let me tell y'all how many books is the violet spring. Violet spring. Why is it not showing? Violet Spring is 196 pages. And I'm saying it's a thick book because the wording in the book that I have is real tiny. Um, but yeah, it looks like it's got four stars. I'm going to put currently reading. So I can remind myself. Okay, yeah. So, any other final thoughts on Houseboy? Oh, I forgot. Um, I think the beginning of the book, kind of mapping out what happens throughout his life, and how we return back to that was done beautifully. It was done beautifully. Myma, um, did you check um, thrift books? Oh, you found a used signed copy. Look at you. Look at you. Hey, hey, hey. I see you. I see you. Um, but yeah, I don't see any other comments. Um, but yeah, thank you all for journey, joining. <laughs> thank you all for joining the Black Classic Book Club discussion um, today for the book. I'm going to keep losing it, ain't I? Very skinny book. Uh, house boy and um we shall talk later oh off topic but the links to the book club insta page and the description box doesn't work that is not off topic that is on topic because thank you thank you i will fix that let me write that down i'm the type of person that if it ain't written down it won't get done Ooh, shoot, I just stabbed myself on accident. Dang, why is this being a hater like this? My pen ran out. That's messed up. I was enjoying house, Houseboy in the beginning, but then got thrown off. That's okay, Mayama. It happens to the best of us. There was two book clubs that, um, there are there are a lot of booktubers that I like. Um, and of those book Tubers. There's some of them who have book clubs that they probably don't even know I participate in their monthly book club. And there's a couple of them where I just have to DNF the book. I just feel like if it ain't life too short, we live, we die. That's it. Those are two certain things in life. We live and we die. Even if it's for a second to live and then we die the next day. Those are certain. Um, so since we know that, and we know there's a beginning and an end, I'm I'm starting to be a strong proponent of DNF in the book. You understand? Um, trying to see. 
Oh, yeah. I don't know why. Same. Watched it too young, and I said, yeah, I'm going to have to get out of here. <laughs> so that's what I had to do. But anyway, thank you all for rocking with me. Um, if you are not, if you don't know, today I'm also doing 24-hour um, patron read-along or read-a-thon with my patrons, and I am committed to reading for a long time. It's probably going to be like anywhere between 10 and 12 hours our sprint is going to be today, and we are on hour three. We're coming up on hour three. So I want to say thank you all again. And um, I will see y'all next month for the um, book club pick. And there is a possibility that it will be mid-June or, sorry, mid-June or the ending of June, not the beginning because I'll be traveling. But if I read it before then, we can do it then. Erica, hit me up. You know what's up. Anyway, see y'all later. Bye.